Hi everyone, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads and I'm gonna show you a quick way to make any cab, a round cab, into an actual button so that way you can use it at the end of the bracelet. You can also use this technique and these counts to go ahead and make them into pendants or earrings and so forth, but I wanted to show how to close up the back of that round cab in order to make it into that usable button. Gather up your materials and join me to make this fun 12 millimeter button cab. So but before we get started, I actually just want to touch on kind of this little list that I have here. I'm doing a size 12 cab for this feature. And you can see with a size 12, it's kind of the perfect little button size and that's why I'm doing a size 12. We have so many cool new glass cabs in and I'm sure you have things of all different sizes. My suggestion, if you don't want to do a 12 or you have a different size that you want to do, grab a caliper and measure it. And then check out Lindsay's ultimate bezel directory on our Potomac Beads blog. And it gives you all the different counts. So if you know you're doing a 10 millimeter bead, 26 delicas is going to be your starter count 12 32 14 36 16 is going to be 42 18 46 and 25 millimeter is going to be 62. that's going to be the first number of beads that you pull out in delicas that you put onto your thread and needle so again i'm going to be using a size 12 so we're going to be initially picking up 32 delicas to get our bezel started so using that guide as a reference, I have 32 delicas that I put onto my string. Very important if you know your size of your cabochon that you're using to make sure you counted correctly. So I have 32 on here that I double counted and I'm holding them towards the end of a four foot piece of thread. This will be more thread than you need, but you wanna have extra in case you decide to embellish it, embellish it with crystals or kind of expand it more and have fun with it there because there's a bunch of different tutorials on that. So I'm going to go ahead and tie that loop of 32 Delica beads into a simple loop. So I threaded them on and then I'm going to tie them into a super simple, simple loop, making sure that of course, because I'm recording that my beads are not part of my knot. So shift those over, get them out of the way and then tie it into a simple, simple knot. I'm going to start over and do it quicker. So that way I get all my 32 into the loop rather than tied in the knot. Okay. So there we go. I've got my 32 on here, tying my loop in my knot, and then that's going to get me my inner strand. Sometimes you may see people do a brick stitch for their first rows of peyote. I actually like that as well, but this is a pretty easy one to teach. So I have my peyote start here with my 32 beads. I have a size 12 needle on my thread because I am gonna be using a fair amount of 15 OC beads. When you start out peyote stitch, this row and this loop is actually gonna be two rows at once. So I currently have my two, first two rows on. I'm gonna put one more row of 11 O delicas on and then I'm gonna to switch to some Mayuki 15 O's. Coming through, I'm just gonna sew away from the knot so the knot's right, not at the start of my project. And coming out the beads, I'm gonna do peyote stitch. So I'm going to come out one of my 11 O's, pick up another Delica, and skip one 11 and sew through the next one in line. That's gonna position that first bead there right next to the one that I skipped. Again, pick up a bead, skip that next Delica and sew into just the one after it. If you have trouble with peyote or you need further help, we have lots of different videos for you too that you can check out. Pick up a bead, sew through, just that next bead after skipping one. Pull that nice and tight. And you'll start to see kind of a brick wall pattern starting. That you have two, one, two, one, two, one. If that count gets off, you know that you made a mistake somewhere. We also should have a perfect count with that even number. We're doing even peyote. That you should have the correct amount of beads that you're not ending with one bead too many or one bead too little. So I'm gonna continue around adding in that third row, what is my third row of my peyote stitch, which is gonna be an additional 16 of my delicas all together because we're just doing 32 in half. So continue on adding in your next row of your delica beads and then we'll go into creating and kind of cinching in the back for our button. 
So now that I'm done going through this row of peyote, I have one more bead to go on. And I'm gonna go through that first 11 that my thread was coming out of. And I'm gonna add that last bead in. So you should have that perfect circle of two, one, two, one, two, one. What I'm gonna do now is step up. To step up, I'm gonna go through the first 11 seed bead that I added on this row, which is gonna be directly after that grouping of that one bead that I'm coming out of. One's closer towards the interior. I'm gonna go through the one towards the exterior. At this point, I'm gonna switch from the Delicas to the 15 seed beads. And I bought a nice uh, alternate color. These Paisley cabs are really, really fun. And some Paisley and Mandela ones and all kinds of different fun cabs that we'll trade into. So now we're gonna go around adding another row of peyote. And this row of peyote stitch, we're going to add one 15 the whole way around the stitch. We're gonna do this twice, that we're gonna do two full rows of our 15 O's, adding them in between each bead. After each row, we'll do the step up, and I'll show you how to do that after we add in these first of these 16 15 O seed beads on our go round. So I have, those original 11 O's I should have told you was that dyed opaque squash color. And then the 15 O's, I have the opaque red AB, and both of these are the Miyuki brand of the Delicas and the 15 O's. So continue around. Now it's really, really easy to see exactly where you need to add a 15, because you're gonna kind of close up that gap. And then you'll end up with the pattern going the whole way around your piece of two Delicas, and then next to that in order will be a Delica and a 15 O. Two Delicas and a Delica, 15 O beside one another. So again, continue around, adding in a total of 16 of those Delica beads to finish off the whole entire thing with the Delicas around them. So going around here and adding the 15 OC beads in, I have my last space where I'm gonna add a 15 O. And you'll notice that it's starting to curve and kind of go in towards the 15s. That's because the 15s are smaller than the Delicas. So naturally it's gonna start to curve inward. After you go through that last Delica bead, that is going to be the first one your thread was coming out of, give a nice little tight pull, and that'll pull in that inner row of your 15 0 Delica beads. From here then, we are going to do another step up. We're gonna step up by going through that first Delica bead that we added, or the first 15 0 rather, that we added in in this row. So that's one step up there. Now we're gonna add another row of our 15s by taking another 15 and then sewing into the next 15 that is on our peyote loop. So 16 more 15 O's get added, adding on a 15 O, sewing through the 15 O that's already there. As you are going around, it's gonna get even smaller. I want you to keep a little bit of tension on there to really pull those 15 O's in towards the center of that Delica loop. Here's where our back gets a little bit more fun. So what we're gonna do is change up from doing regular peyote, and I have my last 15 -0 there, and I'm gonna go through that first 15 -0 that I added in addition to finishing off by going through that last 15 -0 from that first row of 15s. So I have my last one that I'm putting on, and at the same time that I'm gonna step up through the first 15 that I put on in the row that I'm completing. And give a nice tight pull. And you can see that's already cinched that up and made that smaller. That's actually going to be the look that we have in the front of our button. You can decorate it, you can play it up. I'll bring another uh, example, excuse me, example in, and you'll be able to see kind of what you can do with that. But really what this video is gonna concentrate is creating that back and getting that nice flat back to create that nice bail on the back. Whether or not you do it with seed beads or I'll show you with a wire guard how to do that. This row of peyote stitch, what we're gonna do is skip. So we're actually going to start decreasing. To do so, we're going to put on one 15 L, sew through the next 15 that's in line from that previous row of 15s, the one sticking up, and that's gonna add in that one new 15. Instead of adding in another 15 right away, we're gonna sew down into our first row of our 15s. 
then we're gonna sew up into our second row of 15s. So we're basically doing kind of a wave down and up, down and up. Add a bead on, go through that next bead in the second row, and then we're gonna decrease by going down into the first row of our peyote. So we're always going through the 15s, never back to the 11 row. And then we're gonna come back up, doing that step up, going up to the second row, adding another 15, and going into the next bead in the second row. So basically what this is doing is it's skipping every other bead and it's kind of getting that scalloped look. So you're constantly going from the first row that you sew down to, then sewing up to the second row of the peyote of that 15. When you get to that second row, add another 15, go through the next bead in that second row, so just continue on with the peyote stitch. And then instead of adding another bead like we've been doing in the regular peyote, that's where we stitch down and go into that first row of the 15s. Then again, back up to the second row. Once I come out that second row, add on another 15 and go through that next bead. Now, what you'll realize is that you're not adding 16 beads because you're only really doing every other. You're skipping one of those, so you're gonna decrease that in half again. So really what we're doing right now is we're going to be adding eight 15s to this inner portion to help us get that to flatten out. So I'm gonna continue on with the design, going in and skipping every other. And if you kind of get the hang of it and looking at it closer to you, you'll be able to see kind of if you can sew through two beads at once when you're doing that step up from one to the other, popping out, adding on your extra 15, and really continuing on then with that peyote stitch. And this took a couple of tries with this size to figure out exactly um, how many beads to skip and how to do this downgrading of this peyote. And then with the different size cabs too, that we had said, you're gonna start out the same way, doing two rows of the peyote with the 15 O's and then doing a skip row where you're doing every other row of, or every other bead is the peyote stitch. Other than that, you're kind of sewing down into the row. So this one here, we're getting that scalloped look again by sewing down into row one and then back up to row two that we completed our last go round, adding a bead like we do peyote stitch into the next bead in row two. And then instead of adding a bead and going into the next bead in row two, sewing down into row one. Back up. And this will finish off that scalloped row of these 15 O's. To finish it off, what I need to do is sew down into that first row, sew into the second row, and then come out through that first 15 O that we just added in that third row that we're finishing up here. This is gonna be our chance now to go back to our 11 O's. So we did a skip row where we did only every other of the peyote and we didn't see any thread because we sewed back down to row one. And now we're gonna go around doing a row of 11 O's. So we have our 15 O's, those eight 15 O's. We're gonna add eight of our delicas between those 15s that sit up. So between those eight 15s, go one delica, and then sew into that next 15. One delica, sew into that next 15. And the whole way around. You'll be able to see a little bit of thread here while I'm spinning around and going through. And I wanted to use these big color differences too so you could see the difference in the beads when you're looking from the Delicas to the 15 O's. So right now we have on six. Here's number seven. And then to close it up is number eight. So as I put on my eighth Delica here, I'm gonna go back through that first 15 as well as stepping up through the Delica bead. 
and out. Once you have that step up then and you're through and coming out that Delica bead, ready to add your next row of peyote, I want you to give a nice tight pull. And that's really going to close up and kind of flatten out that back. So when you look at it, it's almost creating that little, it reminds me of the uh, paper or the paper plate holders that I know my mom had that you could sit the paper plates in. But it's that nice kind of flat surface that we're getting ready then to even downgrade even more. So here in the example piece, you can see those blue seed beads, those darker blue are my Delicas. And now I'm gonna go in and add another row of 15 O's. So I'm gonna add a row of 15 O's now, between a 15 O row between those Delica beads. So you're coming out to one of the yellow Delicas. And let's get that tail out of there. And you're coming out the yellow row of Delicas and we're gonna add eight more 15 O seed beads. So those eight 15s are gonna go around, around, and around the Delicas. So one 15 into the next yellow Delica. One red into the next yellow. So this continues with the peyote stitch, but allows us to get smaller and smaller. Not only is this going to make it easier for our uh, button kind of shank that we're creating to sit, it's also gonna protect the back of the cab. One of the other things that you can do is paint the back of the cabochons with Permalac. Because it is a paper back, you don't want it to get wet for, these, for some of these fun cabochons. So you can actually take the back of this and paint it with that Permalac, which is going to be a protective coating that's going to help keep that nice. Same with the Rivoli, you can do that same thing. Keep that silver foil on the back. So here I'm going around and I have my last, oh, second to last, 15 to put on. I've got one more to go. So I have one more 15 to put on and I'm gonna sew through my final Delica here. And as I sew through that final Delica, what I want you to also do is after you come out that Delica, when you're coming out that Delica, give that nice tight pull again. And then when you look here on the actual piece and kind of you can see here with that piece a little bit closer, you're going to be then, you see that kind of nice lined seam, you're going to end up sewing your needle and thread still doing another step up. We're going through that 15 that you put on first. So the needle is gonna go through that first 15 that we put on with this rotation of these eight 15s. As we go around here then, we're going to do another row where we do a skip row. So we're going to still be skipping basically every other row. So I'm gonna pick up one of my Delicas. I'm gonna sew into the next or sorry, I'm picking up one of my 15 O's. So into the next 15 O, just the 15 O, and that's gonna pop one bead down there. I'm then gonna sew down into a Delica, as well as into then, and sew up through the next 15. So we're doing that same thing where we did a skip row. We're doing that same thing here on this inner row. This is gonna make us so that we have four seed beads that we're adding. We add one, so down into that next 15 O, and then back a row into the Delica. So up through the 15 O, and then down through the next 15 O after adding a new one. The same time, so through the Delica and down a row, and that gets the third bead in place. So I'm gonna kind of give a nice tight pull. You can see now one, two, three of those kind of pink beads popping out there. We're gonna go ahead and get another one on, which will be our final one. And if you do have a bigger cab, this process is the exact same. You'll just have to need to kind of keep going because it's gonna start further out. So you may have an additional three times that you're doing the decreasing and increasing on the design. I'm gonna go in here, sew through the next bead. Add that one there, let that pop towards the middle. And then we're gonna sew down one row into the 11. It's gonna be a tight fit there. 
into the 11 and then just like we've been doing, I wanna sew so that way I'm coming out through that last bead. So kind of pull that up there so you can see it here. I'm gonna sew then into that first and out that first of those four beads that I just put on. After I put those four beads on, I'm gonna put on one more 15-0 each and that closes me up. So one 15-0 goes on, sew into the next 15-0 in that grouping of four. One more 15-0 goes on, sew through that next 15-0 in the grouping of four. Now I'm using this to actually create a um, back for my cab to sit in, but you could also do the same pattern if you want just to get a nice spiral round. Put in my last bead, and then I'm sewing into that first of the four that my thread was coming out of. So that's gonna be the first one right there. After that next set of four seed beads go on, it completely closes it up. So now you can see it's completely, completely closed and you have that nice little setting for it to sit inside of. I'm gonna come back and sit the cab in, and then we'll do two rows of peyote around the top to hold it in place. When I do those two rows of peyote along the top to hold it in place, that's going to finish it completely off. What we're gonna do now is flip it over, and I'm gonna show you how to, I wanted to keep this back open so you could see, I'm gonna show you how to attach a bale onto this to the back so that way you can make it into an actual button. You can do so with some seed beads and just coming out the bead, put on five, six, seven, eight seed beads, make a little loop depending on your size. Or the easiest thing to do is going to be to grab a wire guard. So coming out of one of those 15-0 seed beads, I'm gonna grab a wire guard. So I'm using an antique brass color so you can see it. And this is going to be what I'm attaching my clasp with. So my button is gonna have this on the back to act like a little button shank. I'm going through the wire guard or wire protector, depending on what you call it, and I'm gonna go down through the other side. Now again, remember this can be used for a pendant and you can do different things with this pattern as well. So I'm gonna go down through the other side and out. And you see how it kind of got separated from there? I'm gonna pull it and make sure that it gets nice and close there. And then you'll notice that when you're looking at your button shank here, you're coming out of one of your 15 O's. You're going to wanna to come and go into the 15 O that sits directly across from the one that the thread is coming out of. So my thread is coming out right here. I'm gonna to go to the opposite side and go through the one that sits directly opposite. Pulling that down then, that sits that button shank right on there, which is used as a wire guard. I'm gonna go back up through the wire guard then, coming out that same 15 OB, go back up through the wire guard and reinforce it. Give a nice tight pull, make sure I don't have any extra thread showing. You can see that wire guard sitting nicely there. Coming down the other side, go back through the wire guard on the other side. And when you come out the other side, you wanna make sure that you're gonna sew back into the original bead that your thread was coming out of but you wanna sew into the opposite side. So I'm gonna have that 15 there, it's a little bit hard to see with these tiny beads. And I'm gonna sew into that from the opposite direction of what my thread was initially coming out of. And that way, that little uh, wire guard is going to sit perfectly kind of right on top of there. Actually, it looks like a little acorn top right now with those colors. So I have two pieces of thread through there and my wire guard good to go. My button is ready. And all I need to do now is sew back to the front of the piece. So with your needle and thread, you're just going to sew right along that peyote stitch, moving from row you know, six back to five, from five back to four. And I usually just sew on a diagonal, so that way I don't have any extra thread that would be exposed. And we're just gonna sew, continue to sew right on out there. And once you're to the outer row then, so you can see literally I'm just sewing right along the rows of that peyote stitch till I get to that outer row. And when I get to the outer row, so simple. You can see that nice little button shank is on there. All I'm gonna do in the outer row, sew on two 15s. I'm going to put my cab in place 
let it sit on in there, and then do two rows of my 15 OC beads in that same regard, doing one row of the 15s, and then stepping up on that row and doing a second row of the 15 OC beads as well. So adding the 15 O's, I wanted to show you that step up one more time. And I have my last 15 O that I'm adding in between that outer row of that first row of delicas. And then going through that last delica, I'm gonna step up into that first 15 O that I put on my thread and needle on this row. And then I'm ready to add one more row of 15s. Now you can go all out and kind of decorate it more and play around, um, but with a button, I wanted to keep it really, really simple and just add those 15 O's right along that outer row. So just to show then as you bring in your last bead, you're gonna sew through and add your last 15 O. And then the simple thing is you can just sew back into the peyote. If you want to, you can bring the thread ends together or you can tie them off separately. That one's already gonna be tied. I like to bring mine to different spots and just kind of sew back in it, especially with the peyote. Because if you turn directions enough times, it won't need to be glued at all. You won't need to tie it off. Um, and just sewing back through some of those 15s. I'll sew back through those 15s. Take your thread zap or your thread burner and burn down those thread edges and that's gonna finish it up. I also put the backing onto the blue one during that little break to show uh, what it looks like by expanding and using some seed beads in addition to that wire guard. And then also I grabbed Anna's to show you what a larger cab looks like doing the same technique. So here in the blue, I have that wire guard and I added some 11 O's to have it spaced out a little bit more if you did want that shank to sit out more. Here then we have done with the regular one there and with this button shank here, all I did was literally expand it and just kind of pull it to the sides with a round nose pliers. And then with Anna's, she started out with an 18 millimeter cab, so that was 46 versus our 32 Delicas. Exact same thing, except she had more fun with the front since it was a little bit bigger and added in some crystals. So she did two rows of her Delicas or her um, 15 O's rather doing that skip row and then came back and added a row of crystals to add a little bit more variety to the front. And then along the back of hers for that 18 millimeter is a seed bead shank rather than a wire guard or a wire protector. So there's all different things that you can do with this technique, but I really wanted to go over showing how to do that back. And if you look at Anna's back, she started out the exact same way, and then she just decreased a couple more times with her 15 O's, doing the exact same pattern though that I did with the smaller one as well. So she was my guinea pig doing the bigger one, seeing whether or not um, we could do the exact same technique. So that same exact technique will work with those variety of sizes and you can play around with that. Remember you can access Lindsay's um, directory and that kind of ultimate bezeling directory on our uh, blog page. So check out that because it's a really, really great chart, which will give you the starters for all of these different awesome cabs. And then with that flat backing that we just showed you how to create, the possibilities were really, really endless. These would even look great sewn together. You can use them as buttons. You can use them on clothing as well too. So have fun kind of creating with those different beads. Thanks so much for watching all of these different kind of counts and ways to bezel these calves, along with that really, really succinct, easy way to make it from the rounded back to a nice flat back in order to make it into that button. That was the ultimate goal of this video, was that you could take any cab, no matter what the size, by going back again to that blog post by Lindsay, having the exact counts that you want, and then going in and decreasing, doing the scalloping and going back rows as well. Adding in that seed beads in the back or the wire guard in the back and you have yourself a really cool button and button shank ending. If you need any of the materials, any of the cabs, the Delicas or the 15s, remember there's links below me during that like or right near that like and that subscribe button. Keep in mind if you want to, you can even give your hints, your tips and your different counts if you want in the comments below. Remember you can subscribe to this YouTube channel to get regular updates from us here at Potomac Beads when we do new tutorials, get in new products, and when we have new things that we think will make you a better beater. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy making your own bezeled cab button ending.